What's going on guys, Barry Reg. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Ruger SFAR. I'm gonna to try to answer the top three or four questions that I've been getting about this gun for you guys today. So I'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer so that I can show you guys what we're talking about. And let's get in. So the first thing that you guys ask about is this weapon light right here. You guys ask a lot of questions about the durability of it. Have I blown it up yet? You know, is it gonna blow up? Is that really the best place for it? Stuff like that. Uh, short answer, no, it's not gonna blow up. Um, other short answer, it's my gun, I do what I want. Uh, but anyway, so you guys ask a lot about it. This is a mod light. I run primarily mod lights on almost all of my guns with the exception of a few that have sure fires and or stream lights. But I've had no issues out of this. This is a muzzle break, as you guys can see. So the muzzle blast coming out of this is pretty substantial when I'm not running my suppressor. But the reason I run this so far forward is to eliminate shadow. So if you guys have ever run a gun at night, you guys know if the weapon light is back farther and you click that light on, you get a lot of shadow on the opposite side of the gun that the light's on. And so to eliminate that, because I see this as like a self-defense rifle, um, I moved it as far forward as possible because if I go in to illuminate an area, I want to be able to see as much as possible without having this big black void you know, off to my left side. So I moved it as far forward as I could. I honestly might even move it a little bit farther because I still have another m -lock slot right here that I might move it to, um, but we'll, we'll see. Now with the suppressor on there, I get a lot of shadow because I obviously can't push that light out another five or six inches to eliminate all the shadow. But without a can, I have almost none. And with the muzzle, to, muzzle blast coming out of this, it hasn't damaged the light one bit. I, I would recommend if you're going to get a weapon light, get a quality light, Surefire, Streamlight, Mod Light. Uh, Cloud Defense makes some good lights so that I hope we'll get one in and, and test that. Uh, but Mod Lights, I've had zero issues out of. Um, this thing's holding up great. It takes a beating. And even without the muzzle blast coming out of this thing, it still takes a beating. Uh, when you train with these things and you move around and you do barricade drills and stuff like that, you know, I'll use that weapon light to come up and post up. So, you know, I'll, I'll, you'll come up to a nine hole and you'll punch that rifle out and you'll punch that light essentially right into the edge of that barricade. Um, so my muzzle blast is, is the least of my concerns when it comes to that. Uh, so I've had zero issues out of it, no problems with it at all. It hasn't blown up. It hasn't gone out. Nothing's been wrong with it where it's mounted. Uh, that's a big question I get from you guys. So buy quality, and you don't have to really worry about it. Uh, moving on to the handguard and the gas system. So if you guys know if you have a factory handguard still on, you guys see the slot right there. That's where you stick an Allen key in to adjust your gas setting from the side. But now if you switch the rail out like me, you can't do that anymore. Uh, it completely eliminates the ability to adjust your gas system from the side. Now, you can use a 3 16 T handle like this here, and you can come in from the muzzle, and you just come in the top like that, hit your gas setting, and you can then turn it and adjust it how you need to. It's, it's simple. It's a way around it. Now, is it as easy as the factory handguard? Absolutely not, but it is a way around it. Now, obviously, I know the condition of my gun, so my safety's not off and there's not a mag full and I'm one in the chamber when I'm doing that. Uh, but you do you, you do how you want to do it if that's the way you want to do it. Or another option that you can do, which I recently did, as you guys can probably see, is I dremeled out a slot. That opening right there, because it usually has those little circles like that. I dremeled out a notch, so now... I can take the T, the factory Allen key that has the little ball on it. I can come in, so it's kind of hard to see, just like that. And I can turn and adjust my gases, just like the factory one. Uh, very simple modification to do. I would recommend that if you do that, you take your time with it. So I didn't remove my handguard from my gun, and I did it with no issues. Uh, if you're kind of inexperienced, you don't feel comfortable doing that, just take the handguard off. It's not a big deal. It's two bolts and you slide it off. So it's not a big deal. Um, but I'm a monkey when it comes to stuff like that. I'm not a gunsmith by any means. I'm not formally trained or anything. And I did it. it took me about 30 to 45 minutes because I wanted to make sure I took my time with it and made it look, I don't want to say pretty, but it's functional. Uh, so that's an, also another modification you can do if you want to do that because it's a lot easier to carry around an Allen key either in the stock if you have a stock that can hold storage or in the pistol grip uh, than it is a massive T-handle like that. So that's an option for you guys out there. So adjusting a gas system, yes, it's doable with the Midwest rail from the front of the muzzle, unless you notch out a side, the, the side like I did. Um, 
Not as easy as the factory handguard, obviously, but I believe the Midwest handguard offers you a lot more capability if you want to run uh, lasers, other lights, clip-on thermals, whatever it is. I, I believe the Midwest rail is better suited uh, for a fighting rifle. So, my opinion. Now, also regarding the rail, uh, as you guys can see, this is a Midwest Industries. This is their 15-inch combat rail. Let's get you back on camera. 15-inch combat rail. There's nothing special about this rail. It's standard AR-15 rail. If you get on Midwest Industries website and you go to AR-15 handguards, this is the 15-inch combat M-lock. Nothing special. It fits great. Now, I can't show how to install it on here because YouTube is anti-gun and uh, commie. But uh, just a brief you know, walkthrough of it. Remove your muzzle device. Uh, before you do all of this, I would make sure that you have uh, armorer's wrench, a magwell block, and preferably a receiver block, a receiver clamp that goes over the receiver, because you want to make sure that you don't damage your weapon doing this. So, but you do what you want to your gun. Take the muzzle device off. Come in. Take the gas block off. It is uh, staked with two um, Allen, or uh, sorry, Torx uh, screws, set screws. If I can talk, you remove those. Mine were pretty tight. They were locked tighted in there. So make sure that when you do that, you use the correct size tool and you don't strip that out because then you're going to have a bad day. Slide your gas block and gas tube off. The barrel nut, I did not use the factory barrel nut. That's another question I get. This is the factory barrel nut. It will not work with the uh, Midwest rail. So you'll have to replace with the Midwest barrel nut that comes with the rail. Um, so you'll slide the gas block off, handguard off, obviously, and the muzzle device, which the factory handguard is just two screws. Very simple to remove. It's a slip, it's a pressure fit, so it slides right off the front. Now your barrel nut, this is kind of where uh, it gets a little interesting. The barrel nut is torqued down very, very tight. Uh, it took quite a bit of force for me to get it off. Um, so be very careful and make sure that you have a good armorer's wrench that's not gonna slip off. Uh, mine did slip off once and I thought that I ruined it. Um, but I didn't, luckily, so I got the barrel nut off. It was torqued down very tight, which is good. So then you put the uh, Midwest barrel nut on, torque it down to the proper torque spec. I don't know that off the top of my head, but it's in the directions. You'll put your gas block back on, which the barrel is dimpled, so your screws will just fall into those dimples, tighten it up. I put Loctite on my gas uh, screws, my gas block screws. You don't have to. It's your gun. You do what you want. I would highly recommend it. That would even come off. Then you'll slide your rail on, and the Midwest rail, what makes it cool is the little key that's down in here uh, actually fits into a groove that's notched into the barrel nut and keeps the handguard from walking forward, just like these little ears right here keep it from rotating. So once you get that all torqued down to the proper specs that it specifies, you'll throw your uh, muzzle device on, whichever muzzle device that you choose, and there you got it. There it is. Uh, I think these Midwest rails are awesome. I run them on a few guns. They make great products, and the fact that it's an AR-15 and not a 308, super cool in my opinion. Um, other than that, the next biggest question that I get is what are parts comp and compatibility? So just consider this a 5.56 AR. I mean, realistically, it's it takes the same safeties, the same triggers, the same uh, trigger pins, mag releases, bolt releases, grips, buffer tubes, stocks, it, charging handles. Um, it takes all of that, all that's the same as your standard 5.56 gun. So whatever you want to run, like me, I'm going to get an extended mag release for this thing. I'm going to get an extended bolt release for this. And, you know, that's that's the way I'll do it because it will take it and it's super cool. So that's kind of the big questions, guys, that I've been getting. I'll move you guys back some so I don't have to down. But that's the main questions that I've been getting about this gun. So I hope that was helpful. If it was... Great, leave a thumbs up uh, and you know comment. If there's any other questions you have about it, let me know. I'll do my best to answer it. I'm not by any means an expert on these guns. I have been running this gun quite a bit, so I, I know how it feels. I know how it's supposed to shoot. It's a phenomenal rifle. If you guys can get into one, I would highly recommend it. It's probably my best 308 gas gun that I've shot in a long time. Uh, one of the best guns, period, that I've shot in a long time. Probably my in my, definitely in my top five that I've purchased uh, within the last few years, for sure. Great gun. Love it. If you guys have any other questions about it, let me know in the comments below. 
or head over to Instagram and ask me, you know, direct message me over there and ask me. I try to answer all the questions I can. Uh, I'll be announcing the 2,000 subscriber giveaway once we hit 2,000 subscribers. It is a PSA uh, build kit, like a, just a lower build kit, either a pistol or rifle uh, with, you know, the weird ATF pistol brace stuff going on right now. You might be hesitant in doing that, but uh, ATF can't make law, so I'll let you guys pick whichever one you want. But they are from Palmetto State Armory. They're brand new in the box. They are, uh, they're underneath all that junk over there. Um, but they're there waiting for you guys. I will announce the winner on YouTube and on Instagram. But the only way you're going to get it is if you get over to Instagram and mess it, direct message me. That way I can get your address and get it shipped out to you. If not, I'll give it away to somebody else because I don't really have a way to reach out to you guys here on YouTube that I feel is uh, safe enough and secure enough. And I don't want to ship your, the winner's lower build kit to somebody else. So. We'll get to that when we get there, guys. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be getting back to it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And stay strapped, and I'll see you at the range.